Okay. He is not a 3D environment artist. And he is making scenes like this. You know? Mm -hmm. And he as a product of him just being really good at designing and learning 3D and stuff, you are now, like, whether you realize it or not, you're competing against someone like him, <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> a lot of these assets are actually very usable. You understand me? Yeah. And this is concept design. This is not, this is by no means 3D environment stuff but this stuff is not that far removed from being able to be used to do very much that okay mm -hmm. so that's my advice in general like what whatever you do you got to learn how to do it well and effectively got it yeah thanks uh and pick a pick a lane start moving into that direction got it yeah thanks cool all right, Gang Ling. I am here. <laughs> Why are you screaming? Huh? Take it easy. Screaming? You're screaming at me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. I keep my voice low. <laughs> yeah, so I already think you're capable of work, obviously, because I would potentially in the future give you an opportunity. And so that's already great. Um, and it's cool to see that you do have uh, other skills elsewhere, but like I said, I don't really care about them as much as like the primary skill. But with that being said, let's take a look at your secondary skills. Yeah, I mean, like it looks like you go hard, dude. Because this is like a pretty good three D model, too. It's not. Yeah, it's not you. a joke. It's it's pretty good. I wouldn't say that. Um, well, let's look at the geometry. So this is definitely more of cinematic quality. Yeah, topology is hot. Yeah, so you have a lot of it, but you're also conservative where it matters, which is good. Yeah, let's take a look at these other ones. Yeah, I think when it comes to stylized characters, you still want to be like there's a lot of these lumpy forms, and you know, kind of avoid that if you go into character modeling. Let's okay, see how this one. Very old. Area. yeah and it's like a typical thing that happens when people first start out doing 3d they'll make lumpy forms pretty often the character okay, animation my reel that the first page the first page i have a latest i yep. have the latest, latest animation it's a dancing Dun, dun, dun. I really want to focus on animation and concepting, but like, you know, as a student, you have to do all the work as, as a generalist, do all the rendering and lighting. I was just talking to my uh, yeah, technical... Oh, you, you know about Alberto Miego? No, no, I'm sorry. I was... Yeah, so check this out. Uh, I'm going to send you this link to this artist. Uh, he's an, he's the art director on some major stuff like the Tron TV series as well as the Spider-Verse. He was the original art director for the Spider-Verse. In fact, that whole look came from his original aesthetic. Wow. Wow. Uh, but I think, I don't know what happened exactly. I don't want to say this out of turn. Like, I don't really know. But I have a feeling the the reason why there might have been some differences of an opinion. And this is just based off of no information, just what I think about the situation is that he might have just been a little bit more than they could have handled because he's really really strong when it comes to visual aesthetics and understanding of that and maybe he was challenging them in a way that was just they just weren't prepared for it and they were probably mm -hmm. like you know we're just cool with what we have now you know and he's like no we got to go harder deeper like you know we got to really challenge it because if you look at his reel you'll see that like, he really does mm -hmm. that a lot uh, and he's the kind of individual who does concepts mm -hmm. and animation. So there, there is a correlation, I think. If you look at his portfolio, for instance, watch his reel, you'll see a good example of this. Like, he's a really skilled painter. He's got a good sense of cinema. Wow. Are those painted or 3D rendered? 
They're painted. Oh my god. And those are hand animated too, I believe. I don't think those are like <laughs> just right up on the cooch. But he's got like this really he's like an artist. You know what I mean? Like he really has a like strong understanding of like visual amazement. If you ever watched Love, Death, and Robots, he was the guy that yeah. made uh, that made the episode The Witness. That was him in his studio. Really? Yeah. I love that. Uh, and they know. they most recently did the uh, what you call it the um, they most recently did the uh, the Watch Dogs video game trailer, and that's the Tron. Dude, that was so good. Look at look at this. Look at this though. This this is all painted background, so it's so good. In fact, I should look at the Tron stuff. We'll just steal this for our project. That show is so good. Yeah. Yeah, but you watch this on your own time and, and fall yeah. in love with him. <laughs> like yeah, many of us have. Yeah, already. and if you look at his paintings too, like his digital paintings, there's a lot mm -hmm. of just beautiful Draftsmanship. He's just really good. He knows what he's doing. He's not fucking around. You know? Uh, and if we watch the Watch Dogs trailer together, Watch Dogs. Here, I'll send this link too. That's so cool. But we can watch this together. So good. It's so good. Authorities recommend not to approach the individual. First, they came to the foreigners, and I did not speak out because I was not a foreigner. They came from the protesters. So good. I did not speak out because I was not a protester. Wow. They came from the journalists. I did not speak out because I was not a journalist. When they came for street artists, I did not speak out because I am not a street artist. All right, I'm gonna stop it there. <laughs> you get the point. It's cool, <laughs> you know. And um, he, you know, there there is a appreciation for this ability, but like I said, he's been doing this for a long time. Alberto Miego, I'm not sure how long ago when he first started but i will say this i was a fan of his work mm -hmm. um like in the early 2000s uh i think it was like 2000 or like the late 2000s like 2008 2009 mm -hmm. so he's been doing up to this stuff he's been doing this stuff for quite a while even before he started getting really popular you know mm -hmm. and he's only gotten better obviously so uh, I do think that there's a place for people that are pretty exceptional. You just got to work on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it looks like 2006. He was doing stuff. I don't know how, I don't know his like bio. I don't think he has one. Like other than the ones right here. Gorillas. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the history of him. He he's done a couple talks, so that might be something worth watching. I haven't watched him yet, but uh, I always like to say, like you know, people who show exceptional skill, you know, in every direction, 
uh, uh, let's see if I can find one. Oh, this is might be not safe for work. Hold on, House Matters. Yeah, that one's dope. I love that one. But like the Pink Men. This is a trailer for my very personal project, the coolest, most incredible animated feature ever. <laughs> I only need five million, which is considering that overall stupid animation budget films go for around seventy to two hundred fifty million. A very low budget if you have five million, if you want to do a proper and serious film, and if you want to change the animation industry, please do not hesitate. Contact me and anytime soon and let's talk. I don't know if he's ever anyone's ever approached him, but if anybody will, this would be the time. Actually, I'll, I'm just going to steal this style, so you don't have to worry about it, dude. I'll just make it. <laughs> wow. These are all paintings instead of threading panel. <laughs> That's so cool. I think you could do half and half because the way he paints stuff too, if you look, it's very mm -hmm. harsh edges. Mm -hmm. So you could probably get away with having like deep, like texture maps that are this, that look like this oh. and then model it, model simply. And some stuff can be painted. So you don't have to always be like that. Like for instance, this background can all be painted in this foreground. But you can also just make it 3D. Mm -hmm. Anyway, oh yeah, and here's like the Spider Verse animatic that he did. But like I said, I'll let you go through this yourself. So there's definitely an opportunity to kind of like become that person, but with time, you know, take time. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the meantime, work for me. I'm just kidding. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in time, I think it's totally a thing. Like I, I feel that I myself am beginning to thread that line of potentially and hopefully becoming an artistic genius, you know, but it might take me another 10 years, right? I feel like I'm on that railroad that's going to wow. lead me to glory if I keep up the pattern of uh, artistic integrity that I've been up to, you know, for the last... 12 years mm -hmm. so far in my career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like I'm learning how to do more and more things and that is making me an incredibly skilled individual. Yeah. So I, I am not saying that that's impossible, but I'm saying it took me a while just to get good at one of those things. It just did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just be patient and it'll happen. Uh, I do think being concept and doing animation are a little bit aligned, just like character uh, animation, or sorry, character design and illustration, character illustration are very mm -hmm. similar. So it's not like it's like a huge difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like, you know, you're trying to do, um, if you're doing like character animation, but then you're doing photo, like you're doing like stylized character animation, but then you're also doing like photorealistic photography looking 3D environments that are mm -hmm. heavily machine based, you know, like that's like super different. And those, that requires a lot of skill to get good at that. And there's not enough overlap, right? Where I think being a good character artist actually has an advantage in animation because one of the principles is solid drawing, mm -hmm. meaning that you actually should be a good artist to animate effectively, which I agree mm -hmm. with. Because I actually can animate reasonably, even though I have very little experience, right? Like I can mm -hmm. animate in, um, uh, watch, I'll just do like a really dumpster fire example, but even my dumpster fire is acceptable is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> it's not complete trash. Uh, I guess the animation toolbar is not working. Yeah, let's just do frame by animation. So, Let's do this. And it's cool because it's Photoshop. Yeah. All right, so let's do this. Let's design that. And then 
Let's create a new layer. And then let's put it at 50%. And then turn the head a bit. I'm not talking because animation is not as easy. All right, I'm gonna do one more. So you guys, this is not an animation class, y'all. So this will not loop. So I'll just pseudo loop it. <laughs> All right. And then let's give it a 0.5 second. That's too long. Let's do a 0.2 second delay. Oh yeah, the head, the head, the head gets too big at the end. <laughs> Let's see what happens if I increase the frame rate. No delay, and then which was where his head gets too big. So let's let's get to that frame here. And then let's just do this, make it a little bit smaller. Oh. Now it's a little too stiff. I, I literally just moved inch by inch, <laughs> you know? But uh, it's not half bad, that's what I'm getting at. And it's because I know how to draw relatively well. And there's a little bit of a pop at the end. Mm -hmm. I think there's, this is too much of a pop, like I do too much. <laughs> um, if I if I was to animate this well, I would probably duplicate this layer, and then basically let's copy all this stuff on here. Let's put it on here, and let's be smart about this. Whoa! Just like warp it a little bit. What's this tool? It's just the warp tool. Oh, wow. That's very impressing. impressive. I mean, uh, uh, put a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of a pot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then let's, uh, let's add a couple of frames at the beginning. Uh, uh, uh. Wow. But see, even with my <laughs> limited skills of an animator, I have like, it's still jarring that little pop. Uh, I think uh, if I had to do it, I'd probably, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I'd probably duplicate this layer again. Now let's do it. You know, and that's, that's just me <laughs> dicking around. I'm not even trying to do a good job. And it's in Photoshop, so I can actually paint it too. So if I wanted to be a real try hard, you know, like go to this layer, 
and really let's let's see what that'll look like. I'll, I'll I'll not spend more than I'll give myself five minutes tops. So if I were to come in here and do like a graphic read, mm -hmm. like my typical fashion, and then give this like some features. Oh, it's cute. And uh, then go to the next frame. Oh no. What have I done? No, it's supposed to be this frame, you goofball. Um, okay, anyway. And then go here and try to think where this would be. <laughs> but what I'm trying to get at, I'll talk through it while I'm painting these out. Um, this is supposed to be, oh, those, that got too dark, the arm. So this, this layer is supposed to be lighter. Um, the point I'm trying to make, though, yeah, it's fine. It'll do the job. Is that like, you know, there's some, there's some stuff that's adjacent. That's all I'm getting at, you know? And I feel like, you know, doing this type of stuff is adjacent. It doesn't feel too, um, it doesn't feel too bizarre to me. And uh, when I actually worked at my very first studio gig, I actually did 2D animation. Wow. Yeah. Like as a generalist? Yeah, I was somewhat of a generalist. Okay, so let's... Did you but, apply to, to work as, a, as an animator or they- No, they, they just made me to do it, yeah. And it, was be, it was, and it was because the studio was super small. So when I, when I tell you guys you should pick the job or do work that fits the job that you wanna do, it's really kind of reflecting of that moment that I went, had in my career. Did you have any experience on animation or- did No, you, <laughs> no. Okay. I don't know if this is gonna work out. Let's see how this works. <laughs> Oh, there's, a, there's a little bit of glitch here. What's, what's that glitch? There. Oh, right there. So this. So frame five. And these should all be frame five. Yeah. Yeah, we hold that position a lot longer. Let's go ahead and delete this. Yes. And then let's see. Yeah, there's a little bit of uh, proportion problems now that I painted it. <laughs> but just showing you that, like, I, I got some skill. And if I really wanted to go hard, I would try to, like, actually make this work out. And one thing that I will say is that Blender has this new tool called Grease Pencil. Or it's not new, but it's like this tool that's really been loved for its ability to draw in 3D space while you're animating. And wow. so the project I'm working on is very story driven and I'm expected to do some animatics and storyboards. So I'm like, I'm probably gonna use it in a real way to try to like tell stories, you know? So this makes you me think of, um, of a guy called um, Goro Fujita. You might've heard of him. Absolutely. He does everything in VR using Quill. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, that's not a bad idea either. <laughs> now that you said that, I totally realized like I should do that too. Oh um, yeah, boy. <laughs> oh yeah, boy. Um, especially for what I'm trying to demonstrate. Uh, it's actually not a terrible idea. I, I'm just not that skilled at it. So it would definitely be a hurdle of learning the tool. 
more than anything, but uh, it's a great idea. And I'm glad that you mentioned that. I totally forgot. And I have VR, so I can totally do it. And I have yeah. it. I have that app too. I've messed with it a couple of times and it's freaking cool. I'm just not good at it. So I just need to become good at it. Anyway, hope this helps you guys understand that it is possible to do other skills. I'm just saying it's hard to do each and every one of them. Respect that. But there is definitely overlaps. So mm -hmm. anyway, cool. Yeah, I would say you're on the right path, Gingling, though, regardless. I would say be more focused. Like I know you're saying there's other stuff that you have to do, but mm -hmm. try to get really good at the two things that you really love, designing yeah. and uh, animation. And yeah. I think that's reasonable. Uh, you're at a really good spot already. If you were not, I would be giving more strict advice, but I do think you have skills to like leverage any one way. You just need to pick sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's take a break, and then we'll end the class with the, the final Q&A, y'all. My dog has passed out, so maybe we'll take a shorter break. I'll talk to you guys soon. And while we're waiting, I'm just going to put this animation on loop. Oh, please. <laughs> for your enjoyment. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Is it playing? Yeah. Dun, 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 Come on now. Dun, dun, dun. I'll, I'll right. be right back. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. How's back? I was, was going to ask you um, if you used Marvel as a designer to, to develop the clothes of that character uh, on your website. Um, you the one that? with the, uh, the bird. Oh, yeah. Yes and no. I used Marvelous Designer and then I retopped the Marvelous Designer to pop, I mean, pop polygons. And then I use, and when I post, after I post my characters, I do a clothes simulation in Maya on the clothes topology and yes. polygon. Okay. Because the topology looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it's not dense. And, um, Pretty refined. I mean, the uh, the uh, the character looks great. Um, did you work on the on the feathering um, in Maya too? Yeah. Did you? Okay. I work for the feather in Maya. <laughs> very well. Thank you. Very very um delicate work. Thank you, friend. There are a lot yeah. of like collapsing. The faces are collapsing everywhere in the feather feathers. Uh huh. I hide it so you don't see it. The collapse of the feather. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I find Blender is a good tool to do retopology. Um, I, I'm still to, to learn how to do it in Maya. Um, but how many polygons uh, do you have there about um, for the body? I mean, about 15,000? I, I can't remember. I'm sorry. Yeah, something like that, 15,000, I'd say, something like that. I don't know, I forget. I didn't, uh, it's like yeah, half a year that. ago, this project, yeah. It's uh -huh. six months ago. Really cool, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the animation that you did, mm -hmm. where was it? It's an assignment, uh, like I was in I animate. It's an animation uh, training school. I don't know if you know that school, but no. it's an assignment for that school. I, I, I had, I, I had a, like uh, <laughs> eleven weeks of education okay. in that school during summer vacation. Mm -hmm. They are very good. They are very cool. Mm -hmm. If you are interested but in animation. I am. Could you could you send your... me of this school of of this training? Uh huh. And so did you do uh, the character below the animated one um, through a, a training too, or was it a was it a lesson that you took, or was it your just your own invention, your own will, free will to do that character? You mean this character? Yeah, with the bird. Oh, that's that was. A school assignment, like I'm a 
graduate student at School of Visual Arts. That's his school okay. assignment. Right. The animation is from I animate assignment. So yeah, okay. So the character below, I mean the uh, the one with the bird, mm -hmm. um, was part of your your program at, at this this um, college or school. Sorry. Yeah. Your your, your graduation, I mean. Uh huh. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, that was an affirmation. Uh, I, I just uh, understood that the character with the bird was the result of um, your lessons at this graduation that you're doing. Mm -hmm. We have a very cool, like, a uh, modeling teacher and SBA advanced character modeling that class. Oh. It's very cool. So could you send us the, the link for this I, I animate training oh, course? Oh yeah, of course. Or I'll look it up anyway. Okay. I animate. Uh, I will just type in the chat and you can take a look. Mm -hmm. The website is very easy to find. It's called I, I animate. I am animating, so I animate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, great stuff they have there. So let's see, workshops. Yeah, that's I take a uh, feature film workshop. You can take, uh, there are game and creature workshop as well. I'm gonna go for, let's see, creature animation. Let's see this. Yeah, 11 weeks. Like anything in this field, especially coming from the US, price is not low. <laughs> what is not low? I'm sorry? The, um, the price. Oh yeah, a great, a great, very expensive. Yeah. Um, flight school is a fantasy creature. Workshop three. So, do they also teach you how to sculpt the models? No, it's mm. you can take a modeling uh, workshop. If it's animation workshop, they only teach you how to animate. They have their own rigs on mm -hmm. their resources. You can just download the rigs and start animating. Mm -hmm. Super cool. A great game animation. Well, let's see what they have there. Yeah. Because I'm really into um, developing creatures and characters for games, uh -huh. and I I'm working on developing a topology that is animation friendly. You mean uh, animation uh, ready uh, characters? Are, sorry. Uh, you mean a four feet character rigs? A uh, what? Uh, you are you saying that you are looking for a uh, creature rigs? Yes. Um, oh, I can share with you. I have oh, the resources. After resources, I will just share you my Google Drive. <laughs> if that's oh, okay. Absolutely, please okay. do. Do you want to share it through Instagram or what? Oh, actually, can I send you send it to your email? Oh yeah, sure. Like you can tell me your email address. Right. Just a minute. So I can't stop um, watching this animation that Anthony Anthony did. Oh my god. It's on my screen all the time. It's it. It won't stop moving. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to send my email through the um, Zoom chat 
window. Okay, okay. There you have it. Okay, I will send it to you later. All right, sure, yeah, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been trying to build my, my um, skills on, on topology, because that's the most technical and mechanical stuff right. that, I've, that I've ever done, so it's- Greatest animation rough. of all time. Oh, seriously, no. You guys are welcome. We don't pretty, deserve this. <laughs> That's probably the greatest thing you guys have ever seen the whole class. I've done lots of things, but that by far is the best thing that I did. And I appreciate you guys. All right. Anyway. Oh, no. I hate when I do that. Uh, questions. As I begin... To do Man, I was the unthinkable. I was watching a few videos on that software, um, Character Creator. Oh yeah, that thing is, Oh man, I think it's gonna take over the market. Yeah, you see where like you could take photos and it just like figures it out. Even even um, cartoony characters now, <laughs> you can stylize your 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 characters. It's yeah. Sick. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, can't get caught up with the tools being your saving grace. You know what I mean? Yeah, Gotta be we need to to work on our you know on our ideas and you know creativity. Otherwise, machines are going to take it over completely, and we'll be left alone. And you know, I'm really hoping. Yeah, I'm really hoping for us to become like the movie Wally. -E. Where we're just like gelatinous creatures <laughs> and the robots just take care of us. Now, uh, I don't, I'm actually a little more optimistic that that movie implies. Uh, I think that we will definitely be in a state where the machines will be more in control, um, but not in a way that's bad. Like it could be that they just do everything that we don't want to do, right? For instance, they may, um, you know, uh harvest that energy for us like with solar panels and stuff create technologies like that mm -hmm. for us they will create food and transport it for us and just basically be like well groomed butlers you know yeah. well, and the, uh, the positive thing about this is that if that happens people will start having more free time to work on things that they really like and invest time in quality you know, activities. Um, but I don't know if that will ever happen. I mean, if, if we'll get to that point of, you know, in. Yeah, I honestly, yeah, exactly. I honestly think it's more that we're going to fuck it up. It's less about the machines killing us. It's more that we're stupid. Um, like, I, I'll give you a great example of like a human stupidity that we could do. We could design like a uh, an AI or something and we say you know we want you to find the best way to make energy you know at all costs mm -hmm. yeah and it's like okay cool and so at first it starts doing some cool innovative stuff and we're like awesome and then it starts to go a little bit beyond that and we're just like oh, okay what's this about and then it starts to get like really weird about it and hmm. it might start doing stuff like, you know, creating these micro robots to harvest like, you know, solar energy. And you're just like, okay, that seems so safe. But then it starts creating the spaceship to send out into space to create a Dyson sphere that blocks out the sun as it's collecting energy because it's not considering the welfare of the humans who, in which they created. <laughs> it's only focused on making better energy. So it's not actually trying to kill us. It's just doing it because we didn't, think it through you know this makes me think of an episode of um what's it called uh black mirror rick and morty oh rick and morty you know? yeah absolutely 
there's this episode, you know, the uh, the grandpa he creates this this um, helmet that helps the dog thinking. I mean, smartly. Yeah, I remember uh, this episode. Then all of a sudden, the dog is so, uh, uh, the dog is so smart that realizes that you know he is just the product of a um, human control over wolves. Yeah, and yeah, like the breeding practices. Humans. Yeah. He he dominates humans, and it, it, it's just crazy. Yeah. I I agree with this premise. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that's what will happen more than anything else that makes sense. Quite optimistic, yeah. Yeah, I think that we're just a lot more um We're a lot more uh, arrogant. Mm. And I think that's what's going to lead to our demise, <laughs> is our own idiocracy. It's funny, it's funny that, that, you know, that aspect of our humanity takes over many others, uh, especially the, uh, the, the good ones. Yeah, this tool is... OP, bro. Oh, the new, uh, the new. Um, <laughs> what the f, dude? Tool for clothes. Look at this, like chicken wing, cloth covered chicken wing that I made. <laughs> Doesn't make one. I eat it though. Chicken wing, chicken wing. Looking good. All right, anyway, I that brush has a, has this new um, update on, like sort of simulating what um, marvelous designer does. It's 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 the latest um, update that they've released. Yeah, I got it. I know you're talking about. I haven't messed with it yet because uh, I feel like there's better tools that can do it. But anyway, let's get into some questions and answers before we get real deep into it. Anyone have any questions? I know Tyler, you may have had some. I'm not sure if you. I know you uh, asked I a couple. One. Yeah, go for uh, it. You said uh, that you're like your family is like a fan of playing board games and stuff. You mentioned uh, working on board games, but was that for you yourself or? Oh yeah, it was for have myself. Have you actually worked on? Oh, okay, because I was going to ask if you've ever actually like worked on. I have. Stuff. I've worked on a couple board games, yeah, but uh, not like any big ones. But yeah, I have. I have. But. I was using that as an example of like how I get real interested in stuff and I go all in, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I don't like, you know, I think a lot of times when people ask me questions of like where to start or how do I begin or whatever the reasons are, right? There's plenty of great reasons to be confused. Uh, I always try to bring back the idea of like, you know, just try to like really investigate for yourself, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, because I'm trying to also teach a resourcefulness, you know, when with that type of lesson mm -hmm. that I think people, um, they tend to uh, neglect, you know, and once you don't, like once you start to really, you know, uh, be a little bit more hardcore parkour about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just, you just do better. Uh, you just do a better job of like, being able to find jobs <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. but anyway yeah it was it was just a hobby that i wanted to do i still am very interested in it actually any other questions yeah i have a, a question um what can I practice to get better at like um, completing a scene or completing uh, just like a, a space, like a setup of like the environment, you know, characters and just making it more complete? Um, sorry, uh, say that last part again. I was like completely distracted with this tool. That's my fault. I'll listen this time. I promise. Uh, um, no, I was saying, uh, what can I practice in order to like get my, I guess, 
scene or any picture just more professional and more like a completed uh, image. Yeah, I got you. Uh, the reality of that is just you got to really get good, get good at a lot of fundamental stuff. Like you have to know how to paint materials. Mm -hmm. You have to have an idea of what you're painting. You have to know like what anatomy is and all that kind of stuff. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, what it truly comes down to is just, uh, ooh, yeah. it's just like this real aggressive approach to, um, uh, wait, why the hell is this not? Um, it's really this aggressive approach to uh, mileage, man. You know, I think ultimately people okay. just do not put in the mileage and that's usually what holds people back. Uh, whenever you think about finishing a painting, it's about actually finishing a painting. I learned a lot of huge lessons uh, when I was practicing like how to finish I images, you know, more than yeah. anything else. Does it make sense? Like, I think people are like, afraid they're going to do a terrible job right and so when they mm -hmm. do try to paint and do all that kind of fancy stuff right and it starts to not come together like this they don't feel it or they're like really hating their image i think i think that's like the point like you're supposed to go through it as i've shown you guys many times in the class right i've talked about I'm yeah. just really sitting down and like focusing in is the strategy, you know, but yeah, yeah. Like people tend to just be really, um, really afraid, man. They just are just afraid of like putting that extra effort of failing. And because of that, they, they run into this problem that I'm talking about of like not knowing how to finish images now. But like I'm saying, like that's the, that's part of the deal. Like you should just try it because it helps you see the problems that you need to do. So, for instance, like right here, like I'm messing around. So this is not uh, a way to learn how to polish. This is me like learning how a tool even works, right? Mm -hmm. But then let's say I build some confidence in this process that you see me doing. Like I feel okay, you know, this is cool. I like I like what I'm doing here. I'm messing with these different brushes, you know, trying different things out. But then I'm like, okay, but let's actually try to create a, an image that looks good. You know, like, let me actually try to make a final image. And what does that actually mean? You know what I mean? And when I do that, like when I actually try, I'll learn a lot of things that I made mistakes on, you know? And when I start to like uh, learn those mistakes, then I know what to study. Does it make sense? Like then I know what to practice. Yeah. Like you're testing something, seeing the problem, and then uh, going back and then like learning that a little more and then repeating the process. Yeah, absolutely. The camera is off sooner. Yeah. Sorry, my wife's. Yeah, can, is AC on? Okay, thank goodness, because I am re or cooking in here. Yeah, see, like this is something that I I need to learn how to work on, like being able to design in three D. Now, there's like um, there's a way where you can kind of keep it on one plane. Mm -hmm. yeah. you see how it's like unpredictable there is a method to its mm -hmm. madness I just don't know how to do it but right now I'm not trying to um, I'm not trying to do a good image right? I'm just trying to learn a tool and so I just yeah. keep messing around but th this again is not going to make me a good artist you know what I mean like, or sorry, a more refined painter or of the style. This is just, I'm just 
going through the notions. You know what I mean? Yeah, just trying to figure it out. And just trying to figure it out. What you're using. Yeah, but at some point, I should try to make a, a real image. And so, like right now, like I'm like, okay, now let me try to actually sketch in 3D space. And what does that mean? And what can I get away with? Mm-hmm. You know, and then when I like turn it, what happens? Now, I want this to be on a certain axis, but I, I am not sure if it did that, and it didn't. Yeah. And so now I'm like, okay, um, whoops. So okay, so how do I grab that? Oh, that's cool. That's a good way to delete stuff. I think, but not really. Let's try this. This looks like it'll be do a better job. So like the problem that I'm having is like how do I grab that, <laughs> you know, and move it over? Yeah. Because if I can do that, I don't. Then it doesn't matter if I'm like, because I could draw the arm at any perspective, and then just grab it and then rotate it where I want it to be. And so the only the only reasonable thing that I can think I can do. is to just keep making different grease pencils but i don't know but this is why i would why like oh yeah here we go this is like x y z side cursor cool but this is why i was thinking about drawing on a thing but also know that you can do cool stuff like um you can do cool things like here let's let's erase all this first that's kind of cool too, how this is erasing it. It's actually pretty tight. Um, but let's do this like where I create shapes like this. And then you can actually go to, oh, you know what? Edit mode. That's a way to do it. I didn't even consider that. But anyway, you can cur- cur- curve. Uh, to a mesh. I think that's how I did it. I remember doing it once and it was epic. But you can essentially turn polygon curve. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's what I wanted to do. But like me messing around, like whatever I'm doing here is just a matter of like learning the tool. But if I really want to make something polished, like I said, I keep saying, you get you just do it. You just try to polish. But right now, I'm in learning mode. And so in your case, to get better at the rendering, think about how you render those two characters and now you're working on that third like how much you're learning Mm -hmm. by doing it. That's why you do it. You're learning what not to do just as much as what to do. Just don't let your insecurities drive, uh, drive you away from learning. Okay. Don't let something like, Oh man, this is not coming together. That's part of the deal, dude. You know, like you you skate, right? So Mm -hmm. think about like when you first put on the blades, like were you able to do anything before? Like, no, you had to like fall on your ass a lot. Right. Yeah, but for whatever reason, you were just so into it that you didn't care <coughs> that you kept on falling on your ass, right? Uh, I have like my son that skateboards, and he keeps like breaking his bones, <laughs> like literally, like just broke his toe. He broke his collarbone. He broke his toe. He broke his wrist. <laughs> he's always breaking shit. But he loves skating. He loves trying to learn tricks and doing that stuff, you know. And I've, I've been trying to convince him like that same drive is he just needs to apply it to something else and he can really kind of get yeah. going and that something else could still be skateboarding, you know, just wear gear, bro. Cause obviously if you keep breaking bones at some point like you're going to be broke too broken, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. But he could totally make a career of skateboarding too. I told him like, that's like a real thing, you know, it doesn't have to be like skateboarding, per se it could be something like adjacent like skateboarding uh to doing tricks like teaching people how to do tricks so there's youtube videos of people doing mm-hmm. that 
You know, there's all sorts of ways. Just pick a thing and put that focus and energy. But anyway. Anyway, hope that gives you some help. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I have another question about um, like finding work. If, you know, I don't have that like big of a like, reference or like portfolio, you know, like how do I mm -hmm. go about like finding work? Oh, so like I talked about Billy with you, it's like you got to do the groundwork yourself. Right. Mm -hmm, okay. Like, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds either. I'm not saying, oh yeah, just go look it up. Like, I'm just saying that's what you got to mm -hmm. do, <laughs> you know? And for me, like I networked a lot in my um, early stages of my career, like lots of networking. And I still do, man. I network so much that I have tons of people that I uh, are friends with who've helped me get jobs. Even this job that I got, is because my old game director was like, I know a guy that we should hire, you know? And that's what led me to get this opportunity with them, with this new studio. You know? And so it's, it really is like a, a thing where making friends and stuff is like a real, a real thing. And so uh, let me let me put it to you this way. When you're trying to get jobs at like regular, like typical standard jobs, like the Gap or, you know, grocery store or something, mm -hmm. it's simple. You just walk in and you just apply, right? Um, for the types of jobs that are more creative, is that it doesn't seem so simple, right? You can't see a door to knock on <laughs> and just like, hey, I want to apply. But the reality is that those doors do exist. They're just more digital. And they're more like doors that are like found at like venues and stuff, like I mentioned many times, right? Like yeah, you have okay. to go to like a studio environment. I'm oh, sorry, uh, an event that has like a professional studio environment. And that's when you show your portfolio and you get feedback and people tell you why your artwork is not good enough. But that's helpful, you know, because then you can like work on it and try to improve, you know, in that way. Mm -hmm. but anyway yeah it's just a matter of putting that time and work in uh, in that networking game dude yeah but that's what I'm not good at is networking I need to work on that yeah and it's definitely part of the job so do not take it lightly mm-hmm but none of you guys seem weird. So I think you guys will be mostly fine. That's usually a, a, a game changer if you're just super strange. And if you are strange, you could still work. You know, you just now got to work more in, um, you got to work more in, cave. yeah, like just in a cave. Like literally, yeah, you're right. Like you just need to like just do freelance <laughs> because you're weird, you know? And I don't want, you guys would think that being weird is uh, a deal breaker. It's just that it's like you can't go through an interview if you're just constantly like like eating cheese its during the interview and like wearing like a tinfoil hat and they're just like, what the fuck is that? Unless you're really, really, really good. You know what I mean? Like, like exceptionally good. Maybe then they'll yeah. be like, All right, uh, this guy's super weird, but like, we kind of want to work with them because this person's work is unmatched. <laughs> you know, I have never seen anyone design the dinosaurs like he does. And they're making like a dinosaur game. That's why like you also hear like great, like really funny eccentric stories of like great musicians and artists. Like, like Prince is a good example. Dude, this cloth brush, bro. <laughs> it's like OP. I'm surprised I don't see many people using it a lot. 
Is that like a set you can download or is that just in the program? Yeah, it's in the latest version of Blender here. Oh, okay. Man, that is sick. I need to get into Blender. Look how quickly, yeah. man. And it feels artistic. Like I don't feel like I'm sacrificing. Yeah, the only thing I've done in Blender so far is with apology, but I, uh, I use ZBrush for modeling. But I've got this project going on of uh, uh, this this character. I need to do some cloth for him. So <laughs> there I you go. Use that technique that you're using right there. You're actually giving me a very good idea. Oh boy, look at that. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. it's really kind of crazy, and I, I'm still in a sculpting room. That's what's crazy about it. So I can get really detail oriented. Like I don't have to be like messing with seams like in marvelous designer and then yeah. bringing into zbrush and then fixing some like it's all it's all here bro man i wonder and it's like a proper modeling tool right so i'm still like modeling and what's cool is that you can also uh you can also decimate mm -hmm. so if i go to here show statistics so right now this whole scene is 90, uh, thousand, 93,000 triangles. Yeah. But if I use this, actually let me use this unsubdivide. Let's do two, let's see what that does. Yeah, that's pretty convincing. Okay, so let's do uh -huh. this, this one too. Do unsubdivide, let's do two. And then this, let's see, unsubdivide two. So we went from 90 to 54. That's still too heavy just for like half a leg and like a knee pad. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 crank it to f uh, four. Same with this one. Let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, I think unsub subdivide has its limits. So let's yeah, do this. Yeah, so otherwise you start losing your details and topology. Yeah, but that's why you re apologize in the first place, right? So I'm just trying to cheat it. Um, point two. Like, if I don't want to, like, I just want to, like, have a concept to do, like, lighting passes and to see what it looks like with some proper material. Yeah, so I brought it down to 20,000. Let's put some little, let's put a light on it now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and again, this is like a proper, it's a proper 3D program. So you can go in here. And do some fun stuff. Noise texture. Where is the hell? Where is the hell? <laughs> and math. Yeah. Then do there. Do multiply. Plug it into the roughness. Take the same information, create a bump. Um, plug it into the height, put this into the normal. Okay, and let's see what we get. Oh, there you go. Color's all crazy. Okay. But that's fine. This is what I was expecting was going to happen. Uh -huh. And then the distortion uh -huh. is a little too crazy. So let's remove the distortion. The roughness is too crazy. Scale, we can scale it up more. And then the glossiness is just way too much. So we need to like turn it down, scooch. And then lower the strength of this so it's not so aggressive either. Yeah, there you go. 
Now we're getting something that's workable. Cool, man. Feels like some sort of like, um, like, uh, what's, what's the name of it? I actually don't remember, but it's like some sort of like cloth that you would find like on a traditional like tablecloth or something. Yeah. It's cool. Looks like. But it's pretty believable, like right out of the gate. Yeah. The color is a little bit bizarre to me. So let's try to make it something a little bit more relatable. And then I can just plug that material into the knee pad. I'm starting to believe Blender is the next G, man. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's, that's pretty, pretty good. And if I just put like a plane here and let's make a new material and let's make it orange with mostly rough, looks pretty cool. Uh, hold on to your butts in case my soft uh, blender starts to cook. Let's do, because uh, Zoom wants some of that GPU too, you know? So, so let's go ahead and yeah, just cook it with cycles and get that bounce light up in the pants too. See that? Yeah. And this is all on the same tool still. So I can always go back and just keep sculpting. I think I'm on the plane right now. So I have to go back. <laughs> Excuse me. Grab this pants or something. Go back to sculpting, and then now I can be able to tweak it. Sweet. And I think it's because of the modifier is being a little weird about it. Are you now sponsored by Blender or what? <laughs> nope. Oh, you can switch live? No, you can't, which is weird. You have to go here, click on it, and then go sculpting. I think there's a way to do it. I just don't know how. But what's cool is that like when you go back to it's all ready for you. It's just a matter of switching rooms, you know? That is something. <laughs> that is a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. I have one last question. How to animate right. this? Simple, dude. Oh, yeah. How did you guess? <laughs> Man, you're... <laughs> Yo. Dun, dun, you're dun, 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 dun. All right, go ahead. I'm going to try to wrap up with a painting, though, in the next 10, 15 minutes. Because I was doing yeah, a lot of 3D I, stuff. I, I remember once you said that when you were learning how to do mech design, you would, um, correct me if I'm, wrong, uh, if I'm wrong, you would draw vehicles using sort of um, using basic material like pen. Would you... Refresh my memory, please. I'm just curious as to how you went about um, doing, I mean, learning that ability. Oh, yeah. I just, whenever I try to learn stuff, I don't give myself any advantage. So, mm -hmm. like, when I'm trying to uh, learn how to render, um, like the mech stuff that I you just mentioned, then I spend a lot of my time learning how to draw mech stuff, right? Mm. And sometimes that doesn't require me knowing or like using any of my painting techniques or stuff. I'm just trying to draw like robots and machinery and this type of stuff, gizmos. So I don't need to be good at the drawing part. And sometimes the drawing part can get in the way, right? If I'm just trying to just get an idea out, I should just stay focused then on learning the how to get the idea. So mm -hmm. when I was learning how to do, like we were just talking about, like, um, what you call it, um, mechs and stuff, like I was just focused on like tanks and car designs and motorcycle designs. And that's it. Like I didn't, I didn't get caught up with anything else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and literally, you would look at a tank and just 
just draw with like hard pen yeah and just so i could understand how the tank did i wasn't trying to paint it i wasn't trying to do lighting i wasn't trying to get the colors right or the values i was like what makes a tank look like a tank okay and that's what i'm saying i don't give myself any shortcuts i just give myself like that focus of what am i trying to learn tanks got it so drawing it with pen is the most relevant way to do it Every other way is irrelevant. Like trying to paint it. No, I'm not trying to paint a tank. I'm trying to know how a tank looks like. And once I get a base, then I'm like, all right, now let's try to paint a tank. You know? Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, now let's try to color it. All right, let's try to design one now. Like from my own memory. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then just fill in the gaps as it, it comes to me, you know? Uh, I think, again, people get way too caught up with like like all the stuff like i need to do all the things well like right now that's that's possibly the main struggle of people who learn by themselves like me i um i need to to learn how to teach myself you know yeah that's a great way of thinking about it too i agree with this yeah yeah because because sometimes people like look at the result and they think it's not good and then they get really hung up on that. And as you as you've taken my class, you have understood. Yeah, that's part of the deal, man. Like you're just learning. You're just not supposed to get good results right away. You're still trying to figure this shit out. You know what I mean? And once you start to figure stuff out, you start to feel uh, a sense of confidence that comes naturally as you are patient with yourself. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of times people are just still just not patient. And they want to be good, like, immediately. Yeah. And I'm like, no, nah, man. You don't You don't deserve to be good immediately. So stop getting so hung up on that. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm doing this painting right now, and it's based off of an artist that I just fell in love with. And I'm inspired by, and they did the painting that's very similar to what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to remember what was so epic about it and if I could repeat it. Yeah. Anyway, any other questions? Maybe, possibly. No one? (laughs) Is there no one else? Uh, I'll ask one. Um, There you go. (laughs) uh, What's your opinion on like commissioned work? Oh yeah, do it if you can afford to. And what I mean by this is like you have the time to work for dirt cheap. Uh, what I would, what I, uh, unless the commission's not dirt cheap, then you obviously go for it, right? But usually people will give you like $30 or something for like a full character design or something like this. Um, I remember when that would happen when I first started, I would like just charge like, yeah, $30, $25 character or whatever. And, what I ended up doing was just being like, okay, I need to like finish a character in an hour so that it's worth my time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think that a lot of people, when they first start out, uh, they don't understand that premise. So they spend like four or five hours because they're just trying to work. And then they, when you spend four or five hours for like a $30 commission, you're getting paid less than minimum wage in some states, you know? And so it's like, if you're really, if it's really about that money and then you should have just work at McDonald's, you know? So to me, that's the way to think about it. Like just be very conservative about it. 
you know, don't be too ready to like just do whatever. But it's still like experience and money to be made. You know, that's why I'm not like completely like it is the worst idea an artist can do for themselves. It's like, no, not at all. You know? Oh, There's plenty of sorry, I just woke up. Jesus Christ. Oh, what's up, dude? You made it. <laughs> yeah. I actually woke up two hours earlier, but you know, try to sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, dude. I actually understand because the class is late for you. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, well, I kind of messed up, uh, messed up booking, so that's for me, actually. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's all good. Well, since you're here, do you have any questions? Oof. Um, <laughs> like, what? I just looked up, bro. <laughs> some. Um, yeah, like, how do you do, like... Um, when you feel like when you work and tired and you have your personal projects going on, like how do you recharge? Like, um, like how do you how do you research for like personal projects? No, or? like recharge your energy or like um, how you keep your motivations up or just you know. Oh, recharge. Yeah, I don't know, like how to say it. Like, um, no, I think I misheard you. I think you said it right. I just misunderstood. Um, yeah i mean that's that's a great question that i'm even answering (laughs) um but normally what i would do is just not overbook myself (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh even like i was telling you guys uh you weren't here for when i was talking about the class Uh, i was telling them like my even my wife was just like like you gotta teach again you know (laughs) and and uh the reason why is because you know i overbooked but it's not, it's not anyone's fault but my own. But the reason why I overbooked too was because, you know, I um, wasn't sure if I was going to do a, like I, I needed to have a source of income because of uh, the unknowns, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so because I didn't know what was going to happen, I just basically took on lots of classes, you know, both my own and some from other studios or from other schools, I mean, studios, you know? And, uh, and then I got offered this full-time gig as a art or as an art director. So then I was like, Oh dude, I got to do that. (laughs) And then, (laughs) and then, so then I just happened to be overbooked for the next month and a half. Uh, But normally I would just not overbook myself. And what I also try to do to kind of stay alive and sane is try to work on my own stuff uh, very often. Um, and also just relax. And when I mean by my own stuff, like I, I carry a sketchbook with me and I just sketch, you know, because it helps me yeah. like still kind of be seen as an artist. And then, um, but I also, like I said, I, I just rest a lot. I like take a lot of breaks, and relax. Like I don't mind like taking like long naps <laughs> during the day. Like even though I should be working, like I have like a like a work schedule that I have to get stuff done. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I'm just gonna nap for like an hour. And then uh, my job doesn't care or know the better because it's remote work. But even when I was doing freelance, I would do that a lot. And I'll still just I'll just try to get the work done the day of. I mean, I, I paint very quickly, so it's really sometimes not that big of an issue. But I will say that, um, yeah, it's just a matter of, like, hierarchy of importance. Like, what's important to you? And whatever that is, you just got to execute on that. Anthony? <laughs> yeah? I, I, I assume you um, plan on, you know, doing this mentorship for a long time? I do. It's my Good. bread and butter, dude. It's what I love the most. Because right, I plan on coming back anytime soon. Cool. Yeah. Um, as soon as I improve, you know, on what you've told me, 
to work on. Yeah, that's a that's a great method too, by the way. I've had students who take my class and then I don't hear from them for like several months and then they take my class again, but they come better uh, and more equipped and uh, they just challenge themselves to see if they can kind of take the new lessons to heart. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of value in that. And then uh, a lot of students I have seen that do that also, also like really um, accelerate the opportunity because they're, they're looking more of like at the class as an accountability exercise. And it's really nice. But of course, I also don't demand that this is something you guys do. It's really obviously up to you. Sure. I have a question. Um, if in the future we wanted to maybe like get a little feedback on a piece that we're working on or anything, is there is that okay to do? And is there a way to do that? Like, yeah, you, you could just message me on Instagram and stuff. But uh, okay. obviously, if I'm barely able to like stay awake for just my own yeah. work and <laughs> in classes, uh, yeah. it, it's slower. Like where we have a class, it's a time, it's what it was paid for, right? I yeah. see myself as a personal trainer. I show up, we do our push-ups, you know, and, um, but like outside of that, I don't, you know, I'm not that, uh, I'm not as active, but I do get back to people more than you would think. In fact, that's, uh, I, I take pride in that's one of the redeeming factors that I do uh, a pretty good job of this when it comes to this feedback. But I won't, I won't, I won't say that I'm always good about this, but I do better than most people expect. Okay, cool. I know you do other things too, like um, like the live streams on YouTube. Yeah, those like have that. been taking the back seat because I've been working <laughs> like crazy. What the? Yeah. <laughs> the well, that, that was my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she sounds like a little dinosaur. <laughs> That's super cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the other like week or two ago, you, you did a really fun one. Uh, I actually was able to take part in it. The one where you did that. Uh, it's a program where you can all draw together. Yeah, yeah it's for the light, uh, light box. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was, was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was fun. What was the name of that program? How does... Magma Studio, I think. Magma Studio. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's super cute. Yeah, thanks. She just turned one, so. Oh, congrats, man. Thanks. Anyway, any final feedbacks or questions? I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna sleep. Actually, I'm gonna walk my dog. It was, it was seven great. Miles. I was really looking forward to doing this and I've come to its end and it's, it's, it's been immense. It's been huge to me, both to all of us. Thank you for your, uh, your, your you know, critiques and your suggestions, your help. It, it definitely helped me a lot. It definitely, uh, definitely um, changed my way of um, looking at my work and studying. So I'll definitely get back to, to you sometime soon. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. I second all of that. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, man. It's been an honor. You guys have a great one. And like I said to Billy, you guys don't have to be strangers. You guys can write to me whenever you guys have the opportunity to. With that being said, though, I got to get out of here. I'm going to die if I don't. So, okay. <laughs> cheers, Same. friends. And hope one. you guys have a good one. And Later. don't be strangers. And uh, keep talking to each other even after the class. Maintain yeah. that network, my friends. Cheers. Goodbye, my Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Bye y'all. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.